black sails and planes. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let's in our sorrows grow. No thorns and fair. Far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love. And wonders, wonders of his love. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing.
Father, what a delight to come into your presence with praise and worship and singing. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy to be glorified and magnified and praised. There is no one like you. You are our King of kings and our Lord of lords. And we thank you, God, that we are celebrating your coming, their first coming. But not only that, we are anticipating your second coming, Lord, when you set everything right. God, you are most honorable and most worthy. We love you and we worship you. Amen. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Zoli. I'm doing sound this morning and I get to do the announcements. Um, I've been, uh, I, I just was doing the math today. I started attending, uh, well, it was Point Grey back then in 1990. So I've uh, been attending this church for almost half my lifetime. Uh, wow. Um, I'm, a, I'm leading a small a life group with my wife, Cheryl, and I also lead the men's group on Tuesday nights. So it's my pleasure to give you the announcements this morning. Uh, one sec, I got to put my announcement hat on. Anyways, here's my announcement hat. <clears throat> anyway, so the, the first announcement is uh, we have a new addition to our church. His name is Ivan Weeb. Um, born November 30th, uh, two days after my birthday. So it's a good time to be born. Uh, so he's a gorgeous baby. So um, as you can see, so we can congratulate Nolan and Ksenia. And there will be a meal train set up for them, which starts on December 14th. Okay. Um, the, uh, so there you go. Uh, Sarah's doing the slides for me this morning. So uh, we're, that just gives me... Uh, <laughs> I got a lot of things, a lot of things on my plate this morning. Anyways, uh, the second announcement is uh, regarding the Sunday service on the 20th. Uh, due to the COVID restrictions, uh, that will not be a live service, um, but we will still meet as usual on Zoom. Okay. And then uh, there's a third announcement, save the date, uh, Christmas Eve. Uh, we will have a Zoom service at 4 p.m. Uh, so uh, save the date for that. We will be doing a Christmas Eve service. And uh, finally, before we go to Evan, I just wanted to give a uh, thanks to uh, Annika Dressel, Dresselheis and all the people that uh, worked on the BC Creatives last, uh, last night. That was a real, it was a real fun time. Uh, and it, you know, I mean, art is just one of those things that just lifts us up and helps us to become more uh, human. And uh, I'm just thankful for uh, for all the uh, artists that shared their their creations last night. And if you missed it, uh, I believe the website is still on, uh, so you can look at what uh, what uh, what the uh, contributions were. So at this time, uh, I'm going to hand uh, it over to Evan because she's going to give us an announcement about the church decorating. Hi, everybody. Um, I don't have a hat. So um, as, uh, as Zoe was talking, I ran and found the closest thing I could put on my hat. So it's my mermaid crown. So there you go. Uh, I also dressed up for the part. And um, so my decorating announcement, I've been told to keep it short. So I'm going to try to share uh, the vision I had um, of decorating the <laughs> okay, of decorating the outside of the church. So first, um, we were blessed by uh, Shine Shack. I think it's Shine Shack. Can you hear it and uh, they will be decorating the outside. Zoli, you're on. Uh, I can hear you. Okay, I think we're good now. Um, so Shine Shack will be decorating the outside of the church building. So that first picture you can see um, that uh, where I, I is much taller than I am. 
they will uh, take care of that. But the vision that I had soon after we finished um, God's Grotto is uh, decorating the outside of the church with silhouettes. Um, and the theme is God's journey under the stars. So thank you, Sarah, for, oh, this is amazing. Uh, you're so talented, Sarah. So um, the journey is about uh, God's own journey uh, told through silhouettes that would be placed at stations around the church, starting from the front, uh, starting with a silhouette of Mary and um, an angel. That's a conception story. So that would be, if you can imagine the front of the church, that would be to your right and their life-size silhouettes. The second silhouette would be Mary, Jesus in her in her tummy and Joseph walking past the wooden cross on the left side of the church. And then, thank you guys. Uh, and then on the side of the church would be the three kings. So imagine that picture, they're life-size kings, they're, they're somehow um, attached to the building. So there's, you know, there's no, there's three walking kings. So that third, these are the pictures I could find that's closest. And so you see a silhouette of them walking. And then when you get to the back of the church, the uh, Jesus in the trough, I imagine not having that um, silhouette around him, but just plain in the trough under the tree in front of the beige uh, shack. Um, and then the next um, would be the back of the church where those tall trees are. And I don't have a picture for this. So if you could imagine um, cutouts of redemption children and maybe short adults. Uh, there we go. Thank you so much, Sarah. <laughs> Uh, just like that, cutouts of our actual children jumping for joy, celebrating Jesus's birth, uh, doing somersaults, and we would place them and attach them to the back bushes. Uh, and there's one more uh, picture that you can see. Uh, in this case, it's, you know, the animals who would have and the angels uh, that would come uh, along the back um, or moose. I was thinking of the Atkinsons, maybe they could cut out a silhouette. So uh, the church uh, just told me we do have a budget to buy the choroplast board, which are waterproof. Um, unfortunately, I cannot draw. So where we need help is um, actual people and children, uh, if family, if we could drop off a board at your home, and perhaps you could um, draw uh, the silhouettes. Just excuse me for a second. My my porridge is rolling over. There we go. And um, and the other uh, item. There's the picture of uh, the star of Bethlehem. So if we can get to that next, thank you. So placing three stars to guide the journey. Uh, and it would be the Star of Bethlehem with a curtain of lights over the front door, the side door, and perhaps the tree over the uh, trough of Jesus in the trough. Um, the last piece to this vision is uh, that it's actually a musical journey, too. So I put together a playlist uh, and I need some help in figuring out how to make the playlist publicly available or put a scan code on the door so that um, you can come. Um, the intention is that we will not be having an inside service. We will not be having an outdoor event. This would be your personal time where you could journey with God through the silhouettes, download the music or your own playlist, uh, reflecting on God's journey from conception to birth, from Nazareth to Bethlehem, uh, from creation to redemption, um, but it's a very personal journey with God under the stars. And um, so we need help with uh, people uh, volunteering to either draw some of the silhouettes uh, or uh, using yourself and your children as the models in the silhouettes. Uh, so basically, I imagine you'd be lying on the board and a parent or your wife, Zoli, maybe Cheryl, could uh, trace you as one of the, the wise men. And uh, I will post my phone number and my email address in the chat as uh, well, so that you can contact me directly if you are interested. Thank you so much, Sarah. Uh, there's my email address, evan.chand at icloud.com. 
and uh, I'll also post my phone number so that you could give me a call. I hope that we would be able to put up these installations by uh, the, 20, the night of the 21st, um, because believe it or not, um, I'm not an astronomer, so I can't confirm this factually, but from the media, the star of Bethlehem is when Saturn and Jupiter line up and they create a giant star, and that will happen for the first time in 800 years on December 21st, 2020. Um, so uh, this is the vision. If you would like to participate in any way, please contact me. Thank you. Thank you, Evan. Um, I'm just going to mute this here right now. Uh, thank you, Evan. Uh, that was uh, quite the vision. Uh, I, I can imagine that, that, that our neighbors would be pleased uh, with that. Um, Anyway, uh, it's now time to pray for the kids. So uh, let's pray for the children. Lord, we thank you that uh, you welcome children. Um, and Lord, we thank you that you want us to continue to have the attitude and to be childlike. And Lord, we uh, pray for the children at this time. Lord, that uh, we were all there at one time. And we ask, Lord, that you would uh, help them grow in uh, knowledge, grow in stature, and grow in you, Lord. That they would uh, hear what, they're, uh, what you're telling them through this lesson this morning, Lord, that you would be with them. And, Lord, that they would know that we as a church support them. Thank you for our children. Thank you for what you're doing in them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, okay, and now I'm going to hand it over to Steve and, and Laura Lee, our transplants in Quebec. Hi, Hi Redemption Church, or Spring looks a bit blurry, but maybe that just makes it look angelic. <laughs> um, it's good to be with you this morning. We were asked to light the Advent candle this week, and before we do that, we were going to share one of our Christmas or Advent traditions. Um, this one is one of our simplest and probably one of our favorites. So in the morning of Advent, we turn off the lights or dim the lights and we light one candle and we all declare who Jesus is and we say John 3, 16 and 17 together and then we eat our breakfast by candlelight and that's one of our traditions. So when we light the candle, we say Jesus is the light of the world and the hope of the nations. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. John 3, 16-17 and so some years we have an advent wreath and we light those as our candles, but some years we only have a tea light. So we just do um, what, we, what we can with what we have. So that's one of our traditions. Okay, so for this Sunday candle lighting, um, it's in Luke 1, 46 to 55. So, and Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. Um, I'm going to do a call and response. So, he has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones. But has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things. But has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful. To Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Mary's song is full of joy at God's power and mighty deeds. 
before Jesus is born, before his kingdom is inaugurated, before all the world's brokenness is made whole. May the Lord give us joy and insight that we too may perceive and celebrate his kingdom in the here and now. This week's candle is a candle of joy. All right, and I will finish just with a short prayer. So God, we just thank you for your joy. Thank you that um, you are able to fill us with a defiant nevertheless. I will praise the Lord. And Lord, we just ask that you would meet us in the midst of our circumstances and fill us with that joy. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Excellent. Thank you guys so much. Uh, really great to have you as our candle lighters this morning uh, and uh, to be celebrating uh, Advent together or worshiping Jesus uh, during this season. I'm going to uh, lead us into the time of worshiping God through art. So I'm going to share my screen. Uh, hopefully, you're becoming familiar with the pattern, but I'll kind of go back over it here for us. Um, every Sunday of Advent, we've been connecting with God through different pieces of art. So if you have a journal or you take notes during worship, this is a good time to break those out. Um, and then to quiet yourself and invite the Holy Spirit to come. Uh, we'll sit before him with this image. And if it helps, you can ask uh, several questions. You know, what, what strikes you about this piece of art? What feelings does it evoke for you? Uh, what questions or wonderings do you have? And of course, the thing that you're, that you're trying to kind of get in touch with is what, if anything, might God be saying to you? So you don't have to make up anything, but, but what might God be saying? Uh, and then if you feel led, you can respond to him in a brief prayer. So I'll, I'll kick us off by praying and um, then we'll, we'll sit quietly uh, with, this, with this piece of art for a couple of minutes. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, come and dwell with your people. Uh, we know that uh, you already live in us and we pray that you'd reveal yourself uh, that we would be able to sense you, to hear you, uh, to converse with you in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray together. Uh, Lord, we're thankful uh, for the example of Mary and for the way that uh, you met her and for the way that she responded to you uh, in faith, in openness, in a readiness to walk the path that you intended for her, uh, to be a blessing to her people and to all the world. And pray that we would have something of that heart this morning, Lord, and find a way to rejoice in all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you. Um, let's see if I can. Thank you for uh, participating in that. I realize, okay, maybe I shouldn't have unshared my screen, so I'm <laughs> going to reshare it here. Uh, I just wanted to check in with you about how things are going for Advent. Uh, those of you who are like me, who didn't even grow up with Advent, I didn't know it was a thing, uh, are probably still working out uh, what it means to, to take this season to prepare uh, for the coming of Jesus. But I hope you're doing that. And one of the ways that uh, we've been trying to do that together is to use this simple prayer coloring 
exercise. So this is mine. Uh, I took the picture yesterday. So I actually have done the coloring for today already, but uh, it's not on your screen. But you can see what's going on here uh, as God puts different people or situations on my heart on a particular day. I'm just praying into that. And I found it uh, surprisingly good. Uh, I don't feel any pressure to be artistic. Uh, I am prompted to listen before I pray. Sometimes I, I think in my regular prayer life, I just start talking to God and I don't, I don't take time to listen uh, for what God might already be saying. And I think the most formative thing to me about this practice has been the reminder to pray in hope. Uh, one of my recent experiences of this COVID season has been a heaviness. Uh, and, you know, I, I talk to enough people and uh, it's heavy enough that it can send me into, into survival mode. I'm just trying to get through the week or get through the month, uh, but not necessarily with a lot of hope. And so day by day throughout this Advent season, I've been reminded that hope is meant to be an anchor for the soul. Uh, it causes us to press through the veil into the presence of God, and that's transforming. So uh, it is not too late during this Advent season to begin to prepare yourself, uh, to make yourself ready, or at least to open yourself to becoming ready uh, so that uh, when Christmas comes, it won't suddenly be upon you, but it'll, it'll be something that, you know, you've kind of been waiting on God for. All right, uh, we're going to go ahead and transition in the message right now. Uh, on your Zoom tools, if you look near the top of the screen on a computer uh, or laptop, um, there should be some Zoom tools across the top. And if you can find where it says uh, Zoom tools, you may have to, I'm sorry, find where it says view options. You may have to click on the three dots there where it says more, um, view options, and then go down to side by side. You'll be able to adjust your screen. There's a little slider in the middle uh, so that you can make the slide the size that you want it and me the size that you want me. Uh, I won't take it personally if you make me big tiny. So, all right. Uh, kind of to kick off this message, I wanted to start with a question. Question is, um, if you were asked to give a one word description for 2020, what would it be? Uh, a one word answer, you can put it in the chat if you like. I'm gonna see if I can bring up the chat here. Okay, I've got it. Um, one word answer to how would you describe 2020? This could be your experience of 2020. It could also be uh, kind of a global perspective. Um, not seeing a lot of answers volunteered here. Uh, I, I don't know what you're expecting, <laughs> Tundra, thank you. Lockdown, trust, that's a very positive one. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, overwhelming, COVID, surprising. Surprising could, could be interpreted in more than one way. Uh, new, uh, leaning, as in on Jesus. Uh, disconnected, it's been a year of changes. Uh, pivoting waiting, creativity, mixed emotions, uh, a time of training, uh, healing. I, I'm appreciative uh, of, of the range of answers that we're getting. I think it is a reflection of the kind of year that we've actually had. Uh, I think for, for some of us, it's been a, a heavy, difficult year. Uh, for some of us, I, I think there's been a way of, of, of trying to spin it in a more positive way. Uh, this week, somebody sent me the link to the New York Times year in pictures. I'm still working my way through it. I'm about halfway through the year and it is a fabulous, 
photo essay. I, I highly recommend it. Uh, but it does remind me of what a crazy, difficult, isolating, frustrating, struggle-filled, loss-marked, grief-soaked year it's been for so many of us. I'm looking at these pictures and there's, uh, you know, starting in January, there's a bushfire in Australia, uh, you know, wiped out a bunch of, uh, of trees and animals, uh, flooding in Indonesia, riots in Delhi, and then across the US, uh, a global pandemic, uh, the deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and Ahmad Arbery, uh, the deaths of Kobe Bryant, Chadwick Boseman, and David Prowse, the cancellation of the Tokyo Olympics, and the suspension of the hockey, basketball, and baseball seasons, and most of that was in the first five months. <laughs> it, it just kind of a, a remarkable uh, set of challenges in this year. Uh, as Stephen, Lorley, and their kids told us uh, on this Thursday, um, on this third Sunday of Advent, the theme is joy. So they lit the candle of joy. Uh, but given the kind of year that many of us have been experiencing or that we've seen around the globe, what does that even mean uh, to, to sort of pursue joy? Is joy even a realistic possibility given those circumstances? Or are we just pretending, like play acting at joy? That's what we're going to talk about this morning. Let's pray. Father, thank you uh, for your love for us. We pray that you would come, that you would dwell with us, and that you would help us to dwell with you. Uh, speak and help us to hear and respond to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so Stephen and Laura Lee and their family already read. Uh, this morning's passage, Luke 1, 46 through 55. I'm going to put it up on the screen as well, but it's going to be a little harder to follow than normal because I'll kind of be referring back and forth between the two slides. So if you need your Bible, you can grab it and use that. I want to give a little bit of context for this part of the story. So, you know, in, in this passage that they read, uh, this is um, this is a song that that Mary bursts forth with, but but where does it come in the story? Well, right before this is what Christians have come to call the Annunciation, the the announcement that the angel Gabriel makes to Mary that she's highly favored, and though it seems impossible, she's going to have a baby boy who will reign as king and whose kingdom will not end. And Pastor Kim is going to help us reflect on that next week. Uh, the angel also tells her that her relative, Elizabeth, who was thought to be too old to have a baby, uh, is actually already pregnant. And uh, so then shortly before this passage, then Mary goes for a visit to Elizabeth. Uh, after she receives the announcement, she packs up and she goes. And when she sees Elizabeth, Elizabeth recognizes immediately that something extraordinary has happened and is happening. Uh, she offers this triple blessing in verses 42 through 45. She, he, she says, blessed are you among women and blessed is the child you will bear. And then she says, blessed is she, Mary, uh, who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And so that brings us to this passage that we're going to be looking at this morning, Mary's response, which, again, comes in the form of a song. Uh, just to kind of round out this part of the story, Mary ends up staying with Elizabeth for another three months. So you know, Elizabeth was six months pregnant, so she stays three months. She's there either until right before 
Elizabeth has her baby or she stays long enough to see John get born and then she, then she departs. Uh, we're not gonna be able to plumb the depths of this passage, but my hope is that you'll read and reflect on it uh, in this Advent season and throughout your journey with Jesus. Uh, and so to help you in that pursuit before we, before we kind of get into how this passage bears on our experience of joy or how we think about joy, uh, I want to give a quick orientation to this passage uh, so that when you read it, when you study it, when you meditate on it, uh, you're able to kind of dig in a little bit deeper than you might otherwise. So a few things about this passage. Uh, the first is that some of the manuscripts have Elizabeth as the singer. Uh, most of them have Mary, uh, but some of them have, have Elizabeth. And if it were Elizabeth, uh, that would make sense that this passage seems drawn largely from 1 Samuel 2, the song of Hannah. So Hannah was a woman who couldn't have a baby and she prays and prays and God grants her uh, an unlikely pregnancy uh, and she, she has a son. And so, you know, this could be a little bit like that situation. Uh, but both textual and contextual evidence uh, strongly favor this being Mary's song. So most of the manuscripts that we have of the New Testament, they list Mary as the singer. And then if you look at just the, the flow of the story, uh, it makes more sense that Mary would be the singer. Uh, first of all, uh, given what Elizabeth says in verses 42 to 45, uh, about how blessed Mary is and about how blessed her baby is and all these things, how could she be singing about herself? Um, it makes more sense that this would be Mary's response. And then uh, the other part, which we'll get into a little bit this morning, uh, is these mighty deeds of the Lord in verses 51 through 55. Uh, are we really supposed to link those to the birth of John the Baptist rather than to the birth of Jesus? So I don't think so. I think it has to be linked to the birth of Jesus. And so that would favor uh, the song being sung by Mary. But just so you know, uh, there are people who interpret the song as being sung by Elizabeth. The second thing is that it is a song or a, or a poem. Uh, so it, it exhibits some of the signs of that uh, in its structure, for instance. There's, there's Hebrew parallelism, and it's filled with echoes of Old Testament praise, uh, notably that passage in 1 Samuel 2. These parallel statements, you can see it in the way that I formatted the slide. Uh, you know, my soul glorifies the Lord, and then the part that goes with it is, and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. And so, you know, soul has some correspondence to spirit. Uh, glorifying the Lord has some correspondence to rejoicing in God, my savior. And so, so when the Hebrews did this, they, they would make it so that one part of a line would have a relationship with the, the next line. Uh, and so as you read this, you want to think about how are those two things related? And there are all these different ways they can be related. They can say the same thing in different words. They can say contrasting things, you know, so there's this and then there's something different. Um, and uh, sometimes the, the second line adds to the first. So there, there are these various ways uh, that you can read it. I just put it out there for you to think about. Uh, as you read a passage like this. Uh, another thing that we see, and we see this especially in verses 51 through 54, is these unexpected reversals. So salvation, the work of God, is about reversing something. And what is being reversed? Well, the, the fate of the proud and the powerful and the rich versus that of the humble and the hungry. 
And this is not the point of this morning's message, but I will just say that the revolutionary flavor of this passage should make a bunch of us nervous. Uh, you know, we, we like to read ourselves as the ones who are the recipient of being lifted up and, you know, those, those other people are going to be the ones that get sent away. Um, but, you know, if you, if you look at this, uh, you know, who, who are the ones who get scattered? Well, those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. Uh, who are the ones who are being brought down from their thrones? Well, the ones who have power now. You know, who are the ones being sent away empty-handed? Uh, the wealthy. And so, you know, a, a lot of times Christians try to, try to soften this uh, by making the language figurative. Uh, I do think the language is figurative. And I think there may be a literal element to it. Um, and that's something for us to wrestle with. A uh, fourth thing I want to say about this passage is that Mary is not celebrating a new work of God, but a continuation of the work that God started long ago. Look down in verse 55, um, or I'll start in verse 54. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants, just as he promised our ancestors. So this is. God working, and I'm not saying that God's not working in a fresh way, but it is the continuation of a work that God began hundreds of years ago. Uh, the last thing that I want to point out here, and this is going to bear uh, on sort of the, the bulk of our, marriage, of, of, of our message this morning, uh, is that there is a lot of past tense here, and it's used in a way that you might not expect. Uh, this is verses 51 through 54. Look at how Mary talks about God's mighty deeds. You know, he has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones. He has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but he has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, uh, remembering to be faithful. Uh, Mary talks about these things as if they are already accomplished. Now, I recognize that something extraordinary has happened for Mary, uh, something miraculous, clearly a God thing. And her whole life has been changed, and she knows it. But how can she say these things as if they're already done? Uh, Jesus hasn't even been born yet, uh, much less died on the cross. So can all of this really be true? Is it already done? Uh, Bible scholars call this uh, the use of the prophetic past tense. Uh, you, you talk about something in the past tense, even though it's a future thing, because it's such a sure thing. Uh, and this is something that is not uncommon uh, in the prophets in the Old Testament. So a couple of examples, Isaiah 5, 13, uh, therefore my people will go, uh, oh, <laughs> the NIV translates it uh, uh, as a future, so that you don't get confused. Uh, I, I should have kept it in my previous version. I knew it. Um, look up Isaiah 5, 13 in your version and see what it says. Uh, if it translates it as a future, somebody is interpreting that for you already. Uh, apparently in the original, this is described uh, in the past tense that the people have already gone into exile for lack of understanding, uh, that those of high rank uh, have died of hunger, and the common people uh, parched with thirst. So uh, he says these things knowing that they're coming, but as if they're already completed because uh, it, is, it has been decided. Um, 
you know, Amos 5.2, a fallen is virgin Israel never to rise again, deserted in her own land with no one to lift her up. Well, when Amos is saying this, that hadn't happened yet. Uh, but he's saying it as if it's a done deal. Uh, it has been decided. And this actually will have some bearing on our own thinking about joy and our experience of it. Uh, as I said, this is the third Sunday of Advent, uh, the Sunday where we light the candle of joy. So we're going to talk about joy and how this passage bears on that. Um, before I click off my screen share, I just want to say, am I the only father that has done this in our congregation? Like, thrown your children high in the air and then you catch them. I, I don't know what this is. If you look this up on the internet, there are like hundreds of these pictures. And uh, I, I think it, it must be like a very common dad thing to do. So uh, I, I like this photo though, as a picture of joy, partly because it's not an individual picture. It's a relational picture, right? two people together experiencing joy between them. So anyway, let's talk about joy. Uh, in particular, I wanna highlight two ideas this morning about joy. One is insight and the other is agency. Uh, so first let's talk about insight. Uh, for, I'm sorry. Well, we'll talk about them together. Anyway, for Mary, joy comes before her circumstances have all changed. So Mary talks about these things as if they are accomplished, but there is a very real sense in which Israel is still occupied by Rome. Uh, there is still in her land no king. And Jesus hasn't even been born yet. Uh, the rich and powerful still have the power and resources and control. And the hungry still need food, and the humble are still in the one-down position. And yet there is Mary pouring out her heart in praise. How is she able to do this? Well, this is the, this is the insight piece. Um, Mary somehow is able to see deeper than her circumstances. She is looking at reality or at a reality, her physical reality, but she is seeing more deeply into the truth of things that are not visible by the physical eye. Her rock solid faith doesn't mean that everything around her is already the way that it ought to be, uh, that, that everything is already the way that God intends it. I think if we asked Mary about her world, she would acknowledge that there's still a lot that's wrong, that there's still a lot that she longs for. But somehow, she also knows that it is a done deal, that God has accomplished these things. Uh, maybe, I don't know if she was thinking this sort of philosophically, but you know, maybe God being outside of time, you know, his effects, the effects of things that God, God does outside of time, uh, you know, who knows how those things bear on us when we're inside of time in the way that we experience them. Uh, I love the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I love the movies. Uh, I've, I've read the books all the way through once as well. But, but, but that is a fantastic story. It's an epic. And, you know, I have the extended versions behind me as well as the theatrical releases. Um, I can break out one of those video or one of those DVDs and I know how that story is going to go. Uh, it's, it's already settled. But when I watch the movies, when I'm living in that particular moment, 
with Frodo and the Fellowship, uh, it's a very different experience. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I, I feel my body reacting to, to different things that are going on in the story. And I, you know, I'm, I'm tense during the battles, even though in one sense, all of those things are already settled. They're a done deal. Uh, so Mary bursts forth in praise for these things that somewhere in a deeper reality are already settled. She is not, uh, as some of us charismatics are wont to do, uh, declaring and decreeing something into being. Uh, she is celebrating something that she knows at some deep level is already accomplished. So, so Mary has insight uh, into something deeper than her physical reality. Uh, I think if we want to live as people of joy, we also need this kind of spiritual vision uh, to be able to see through our circumstances into the truth of things. And too often, and I've shared this before up front, so I hope it's not a, like a surprise or a secret, uh, too often I get stuck in the world of things which my physical eye can see. Reversing the biblical admonition, I live by sight and not by faith. I have faith, I just don't always live by it. And I don't want us to ignore our current reality or pretend that it's not real. Uh, it is real. <laughs> Bills and, and illness and conflict and even death, they're real things. But they're not the only thing that are real. Uh, those of us who are connected to Jesus know that there is a whole unseen reality, a deeper, more enduring reality, and we can bank on it. It's a real thing. Uh, and we have to choose. This is the agency part. I didn't say that too artfully earlier, but we can bank on it, and we need to choose to. Uh, there, there is a peace that God does. Certain things are settled, but how we live in large part depends on us, how we choose. Uh, this is a quote I found from Henry Nouwen. Uh, I'm just going to admit I found it online, so I don't know what book it comes from yet, but, but I'm going to find it. Uh, but the quote is, is fabulous, and this is what Nouwen says. Joy is essential to the spiritual life. Uh, let me stop there and just qualify that. Joy is not the same thing as happiness. Uh, happiness is related to hap happenings. It's related to your circumstances. Uh, joy is a deeper peace and celebration that we can have uh, despite our circumstances. Uh, so joy is essential to the spiritual life. Whatever we may think, uh, whatever we may think of or say about God, when we are not joyful, our thoughts and our words cannot bear fruit. Jesus reveals to us God's love so that his joy may become ours and that our joy may become complete. Joy is the experience of knowing that you are unconditionally loved. And that nothing, sickness, failure, emotional distress, oppression, war, or even death can take that love away. Joy is not the same as happiness. We can be unhappy about many things, but joy can still be there because it comes from the knowledge of God's love for us. And then he says this, joy does not simply happen to us. We have to choose joy and keep choosing it every day. It is a choice based on the knowledge that we belong to God and have found in God our refuge and our safety and that nothing, not even death, can take God away from us. So um, 
the application for this morning is, is fairly simple. And that is that in the midst of our circumstances, not denying them, but in the midst of our circumstances, to choose joy, to, to choose uh, to, to live according to the deeper reality of things and to pray that God would give us spiritual insights, that we're not fooling ourselves, um, but that we, we have something real that we can bank on. I uh, wanted to conclude the message with this uh, short video. So I'm gonna share my screen again. Let's see if I can get this to run correctly. Whoops. Oh. You condemned yourself to stay in this night season but weeping only indoors for a night. Joy! I'm telling you, I don't usually holler like this. I don't usually holler like this, but I feel like hollering today. Joy comes in the morning. If the devil was going to kill me, he should have killed me in the night. If the devil was going to steal my joy, he should have stolen it in the night. If he was going to take my peace, he should have took it in the night. Weeping only indoors for a night. Joy! Somebody shout joy! Just shake hands with three people. Tell them it's your morning. It's your morning. It's your morning. Just having a little fun with it. Uh, but the thing I appreciate uh, that the pastor was doing was trying to reorient his people to a deeper reality, uh, to, to understand that the world is bigger than just the world of things that we see and to be able to live toward that intentionally, um, to, to, to choose it and uh, to allow God to give us that spiritual insight. Um, we are gonna, before the communion time, we're going to uh, have, well, let me take, check the time here. Do, 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 do. Actually, I think we're gonna uh, move on past uh, that next thing and talk about, uh, talk about the communion this morning. So if you, if you haven't had a chance to grab your elements, tried to warn you in the letter this week, but uh, please go ahead and, and pull your things together. Uh, I'm just gonna say a few words about communion. We're gonna do it differently this morning. So no breakout groups this morning. Um, we're gonna take communion all together. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna share just some brief thoughts about communion. Uh, the worship team is going to lead us in a song, and then we will take the elements together and receive communion as one body. So in communion, uh, we remember what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. Uh, we own up to the ways we fall short. Uh, we repent, that is we, we turn from the things that we've given ourselves to instead of God, and we turn back to God. And we celebrate God's grace, uh, that being a Christian does not begin with my commitment and depend on my strength, but rather it starts with God's commitment, already demonstrated in Jesus' coming and laying down his life for us, 
And it depends on his strength by the power of the Holy Spirit, whom he gives as a gift to live in us. Uh, our joy is not just pie in the sky by and by, uh, nor are we playing some sort of mental game to trick ourselves into feeling better. We are rejoicing in someone who has entered into our history and who actually comes into our lives. We don't always understand what he's up to, but we are purposing to trust him and we can bank on his goodness. I'm gonna turn it over to the worship team right now. And then after the song, uh, I'll come back on, I'll read from 1 Corinthians 11 and we'll take the communion all together. So hold on to your elements uh, until I give you the signal. Thanks. Give me the signal, Joel. <laughs> It's what the Lord has done in me. Let's sing that again. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Let the blind say I can see. It's what the Lord has done in me. Okay, so thank you for, uh, for waiting. We're gonna go ahead and participate in communion together. So I will read from 1 Corinthians 11. Uh, I'll pray and then we will receive both the, the body and the blood. Paul said, 
I received from the Lord that which I also passed on to you. Uh, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he broke it, uh, he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, uh, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray and then we'll receive. Lord God, as we take these signs of your presence and availability, come wash us afresh. Give us a new start with you and with one another. As we receive these precious gifts, Make them our yes and amen to you in Jesus' name. Amen. So this is the body of Jesus, which is for you. I do this in remembrance of him. This cup uh, is a, a, a new covenant. It's a promise in Jesus' blood. Uh, do it as often as you drink it in remembrance of him. Lord Jesus, we look to you with thankfulness, with expectancy, and with joy. Uh, many of us have endured horrible losses this year, Lord, uh, difficult circumstances that to this day uh, continue to weigh us down. And we pray in the midst of that, Lord, that you would come to carry our burdens, that we would know your yoke, which is easy, and your burden, which is light. Uh, as Henry Nouwen said, um, quoting from John 15, you've come that your joy might be in us, and that our joy might be made full. And if that's not the spot we're at in, if, the, if it's not the spot we're in this morning, pray that you would do a miracle work in us uh, to give us insight and hope uh, in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Going to turn it over to the worship team. Now um, let's really worship with our whole hearts.
Thank you, God. We have so much to rejoice in this morning. You are the one who takes our sins away. Well, thank you. Monica and the team for leading us in worship today. Thank you, Barry, for reminding us that our joy isn't based on circumstances, but in God's faithfulness. We haven't received any prophetic words today, so uh, we will conclude our service with the benediction. I trust that you have been reminded of God's faithfulness, the kind of faithfulness that you can bank on, that fuels our hope and that grounds our joy. So receive this benediction today. Go today rejoicing, for God has done great things. 
Go today with freedom, for God's mercy has come to you. Go today with humility, for God brings down the proud, but fills the hungry with good things. And may the God of all grace be with you this week in all that you do, all that you say, and in all the acts of service that bless the world in his name. Go in faith as the beloved of God, in whose hope can lead us to joy in the midst of any circumstance or situation. For he is faithful. Go in peace. Amen.